Now, I'm not used to doing this, so I will try to keep it short and sweet. I know a lot of the guys that do these videos sound like they've had 20 cups of coffee and a few hits of crystal meth, but that's just not my style. I'll try not to fall asleep during the presentation. Okay, this is my new tank. Uh, I bought one of the usual uh, metal tanks on Amazon that are made in China. There's like a million of them, and I did get the... Uh, 10 liter tank because I wanted to be able to, as you can see here, do maybe seven, six or seven albums uh, at a time. But that one died after only about uh, 10 or 15 uses of 20 minutes each. Thankfully, Amazon was very kind to refund most of my money. So this is very nice. This is a an Isonic tank. And Isonic... Uh, I did a lot of research and stuff, and what's nice about them is that they use bigger industrial transducers, uh, the stack ones. They don't use the little wafer ones, which you find in the little metal pans. So they're a lot stronger. Matter of fact, if you can see down in the tank, uh, let's see here if you can see there. See those little circles? Those are the transducers to where it's even raised in the bottom of the tank, see? And then that one. See, there's three. And they're real big, and they actually come up into the bottom of the tank. So, <clears throat> uh, so I got an Isonic tank, and what's interesting is this is the exact same tank that they use for their record cleaner that they sell. And their record cleaner, in my opinion, I do like the little uh, thing that turns the records. It looks really neat the way it sits on the side, and then it bends down into the water. It does look very sharp. The only reason why I did not buy that was because I had already purchased this which looked, you know, pretty solid and pretty nice, and it was only like $115. And so the deal on this is, it's designed, you see that uh, coupling nut right about in the center there? Okay, that's as far as it goes, because it was designed to stick on the side of one of your generic uh, six liter tanks, which is only about six inches wide. So what I did was I got a coupling nut there, and I got this uh, extended bolt so that I could do that and then add more records. <laughs> so there you go. So I used that and uh, two things. One, the Isonic record cleaner that they have that does the rotisserie turns too fast. It turns like five times a minute, five revolutions a minute, which is really too fast with all the research I've done. Now this one uh, comes with a 12 volt supply which does turn it about two revolutions a minute. And uh, that's still a little fast. So what I did was I bought a three volt uh, AC adapter and that slowed it down to about 0.75 revolutions a minute, which is fine. In my opinion, from what I've read, I think anything from one revolution a minute down is fine. Uh, anyway, so there's that. So since I already bought that, I just didn't want to spend the extra 250 for their uh, device that sits on the side and, and holds the records. Although, I would say, if you don't have something like this or you don't want to make your own, um, theirs does look really nice. If you can just figure out a way to slow down the RPMs, I don't know how the wiring is on that, so you, you, you know. But I do like it, and if I did not have this already, you know, from when my other tank died, then I probably would have gone ahead and done that. Okay, so. Basically, the controls are very nice, as you can see here. Uh, it has a nice plastic case around the metal tank, so it's quieter. And the transducers are bigger. So what you're paying for this, the good news is... Oh, by the way, this is the exact same tank that Kermis uses for his product, which is about 900 and something, right? So he uses the exact same tank. He just does the control panel differently and has his own, you know, like firmware configured into it. But basically the tank and the transducers and everything are exactly the same. So that is encouraging as far as quality and, and longevity, I would hope. So uh, anyway, this tank, uh, the Isonic, and I did, you know, I wrote a couple of the guys and said, hey, you know, how's your tank and this and that. And they, they were really very nice. And what I liked about it on Amazon is that they specifically stated 
not only the one-year warranty, which all the other cheesy ones from China don't, but also they even went so far as to say, but even if you have to send it back after the warranty, it usually doesn't cost very much, like $25 an hour, and the usual repair is like half an hour. So I thought that was nice that they went to the extent to mention that uh, on the Amazon site. So anyway, uh, the deal is, is if you just get this tank, now if you get it from iSonic, it's like $650, which is just about the same as the whole unit with the five record holder and the rotisserie that you can get on Amazon. What's nice is I found this tank by itself on Amazon for about $450. So it's, it's priced right in between the really cheesy ones, you know, that you see a million of them on Amazon from China. Although this one is made in China, but it's, it's dealt with with Isonic and they stand behind it. Uh, so it's kind of in between those, you know, really cheesy ones and the super duper expensive ones like the ones from Germany or the super heavily built ones that are like $900 or more. So I figured $450 for what appeared to be a real good quality design, uh, I thought it was worth it. And with the guys seeming to be, you know, like they'll stand behind the warranty. So, but the only other thing is, I've got it turning away in there. I've already got it heated. Uh, one quick note is the heater does take quite a while to warm up. So if you want to heat the water, uh, it has its presets. You can look at the specs on it. Um, like I say, it's the exact same tank that they sell with their complete record cleaning system. So you can look up the specifications on that. So there's the drain hose. It comes out and I have a little pump there. I used this one with the other one and it seemed to work pretty well. And it comes out and what I was using originally on the left is just a one micron filter because that's the way. This is based on uh, uh, Rushton Paul's research by the way and you can look up his information uh, on the thread and all that. Uh, if I can figure out how to include links below, I'll do that. Okay, so the one on the left is a one micron filter. Now, that's all I used at the beginning. Okay, and then uh, Rushton Paul said, you know, I went to a 0.35 micron uh, filter, and, and, you know, that does a better job, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, well, how about I put two of them in tandem to where it goes through the one micron filter to get most of the big stuff, then it goes through the 0.35 you know, and then back out and so on into the tank. And this little pump is just strong enough to be able to do that. And uh, and it seems to work fine. I did some reviews, or read some reviews, and uh, some guy using this pump uh, was using it to make beer or something, and he said he ran it through like three different filters. And it was like two one microns and one half micron. So I thought, well, it should be able to do this. And I've run it, and it does seem to work. So what's kind of nice is I think the two stages work well, because that way, the third, uh, 0.35 micron filter is more expensive, a lot more expensive, so it should last a lot longer. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, that's for filtering and recirculating the system. And like I say, I use Rushton Paul's formula and all that. So, there you go. I, uh, this is my second set that I'm doing right now. I've got it set for 20 minutes which is about 15 full revolutions at 0.75 a minute. So, And what I did was here is they put a really nice, you notice like a, I don't know what you call it exactly, a little holder. And what that for is for the uh, lid. So the lid goes on there. Here's some of my stuff. You can take a quick glance there if you want to. Um, anyway, so yeah, so it holds that lid. So what I did was, it was really perfect. I just cut out some wood and made it the right thickness and the right height so where this uh, little motor sits right on it perfectly. And then I just built a really quick, cheesy little thing to hold the other side of the uh, spindle. And it's resting on metal because when it rested on the wood, for some reason it wasn't turning. I don't know why. So I stuck it up on the metal. Uh, it's another coupling nut that I stuck underneath there. And it seems to be turning okay. So... That's basically it. Um, then what I do is after I run it through this, uh, these are all mostly, uh, <laughs> they just so happen to be like Led Zeppelin, uh, Quiex, uh, classic record pressings, and uh, I think one of them is the, uh, um, the Paranoid album, Black Sabbath, from with the WWA 
with the uh, Vertigo stampers. So I've got to put some of my good ones in here to go through it. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to give that a go. And then what I do is I come out here and I use my uh, record cleaning machine vacuum, one that I built. Basically that's it there. And I use a regular brush there. And this is my different cleaners. This is the purified regrade water. It's regrade 2 water. I'm able to get it to, uh, from Amazon for about $15 a gallon. And according to Rushton Paul, I add 3% of, I believe it is, ethyl alcohol. Uh, he says it does something with the rinse. And then this is uh, Le Art du Son. And this is... Uh, the AI one step and this is the AI 15 so I have a little combination there so what I do is after um, after doing this basically uh, I just give it a pure water rinse and vacuum and it's great uh, if they're particularly noisy there's extra stuff that needs to be done then I'll give it another go with the deeper cleaners but otherwise that seems to work and I bought one of these which is a nice little thing to check the uh, parts per million, the uh, total dissolved solids, and also the temperature of the water. So that's kind of handy. So nothing too fancy, nothing too way out, but uh, I think a nice system that should work well, as long as the tank lasts. And so I just wanted to uh, post this so that anyone who's interested in this can uh, maybe get a little insight. Like I say, the tank seems to be an excellent compromise between the really cheesy throwaway China ones that you see a million of them on Amazon, which are just the metal tanks, and the super expensive ones, uh, you know, that are either made here or in Germany. This seems like a really nice compromise. And remember, this is the exact same tank that Kermis uses on his system. And of course, a lot of people really like his system if they can live long enough to finish the process before dying of old age. Okay. Well, there you go. I hope that helps, and uh, thank you kindly.